Welcome to Red 35. We are very excited to review the latest Olympus OMD E1 Mark III. Sorry, no, firmware 3.0. Last week, Olympus gave us one of the biggest firmware update in recent times, um, especially for this particular camera here, the M1 Mark II, because as you know, since launch, this guy has received a couple of updates, you know, but most of them were um, kind of incremental updates for either bug fixing or adding compatibilities to the latest uh, accessories. But the 3.0 is very, very different because it's pure performance related and bringing the E1 Mark II up to date against all the latest rivals, almost, almost rivaling its own flagship or flagship, the E1 X as well. But last week, you know, when they first announced, so many guys out there already talked about this uh, particular firmware and we all got excited about it but I just want to give you my real world results and also my comments about the latest update after a full week uh, of use. Both Chase and I have spent a lot of time using this in a professional environment. I've done about five photo shoots, two vlogs if you haven't seen them last week. All the vlogs were done with the uh, M1 Mark II firmware 3.0 and so is Tracy filming about a few corporate events already so uh, yeah we, we are quite confident we have enough experience to talk about it now. For the purpose of this review, we're going to look at three things that matter to Tracy and I, you know, her video work and also my still work. And uh, yeah, first of all, is the autofocus. Autofocus is definitely one of the first things everyone talks about when a new camera or existing camera is out. And um, yeah, this is something that I always talked about, you know, uh, the, how good it is for the M1 Mark II for stills. Uh, you know, I've been using this, as you know, for the last two and a half years, three years now, uh, on a daily basis. Uh, I should actually countless of photos with this camera and it performs flawlessly there are occasional misfocus you know but like any other cameras and all not always 100 percent uh, so i would say it's actually really really good and uh, in continuous focus in particular this firmware update has kind of breathed new life into this nearly three years old camera now and uh, it makes it actually up to date to a point that it performs almost as good as the m1x uh, when i say as good as because i'm going to tell you a little bit about that later um, but in most cases, yeah, this this guy now is actually very good and very reliable, especially in video mode. You know, uh, that's got me so excited. As you not, you guys know that since we started this channel, we film everything with the M1 Mark II. Tracy always uses the menu focus because um, there are still cases when you use continuous AF, um, the thing will just hunt around a little bit, despite it having the hybrid AF uh, system in here. But with the firmware update, the, the brand new algorithm actually makes it so much more reliable. I could literally just point at the subject and it will continue to lock onto the subject without hunting at all, which is really good. You know, if you don't believe me, look at my um, uh, previous two videos, uh, that one was vlogging with this camera on the firmware updated version of the e Mark II. You'll see how it means. There was one, I think one case um, where uh, the uh, the uh, autofocus does drift backward, um, but I think because uh, I have the uh, face detection on, sometimes face detection is not 100%. Like any camera, no matter what you tell me about what other brands are out there, there is a case. There will be cases when the camera actually thinks there is another face somewhere else. I, I don't know why. It could be some sort of patterns that make th make it think it's a face or something. So yeah, when that happens, the focus will drift backward or forward depending on what it is. Um, so that only happens once, but other than that, it's really, really good. If you worry about drifting, that uh, you know, in, uh, during videos, you can switch off face detect and just having the focusing point in the middle. So center yourself in the frame, and you'll be fine. I guarantee that this thing now is really good for vlogging and like people who use uh, continuous AF for video purposes. But for stills, it's as good as ever. Second is the log file. Yes, it is finally here for M1 Mark II users, and it's great news, especially for those who make films. And I know there is already a flat profile, but the log file is the flatter version of the flat, yeah, flat, 
file, flat, <laughs> flat block file, <laughs> whatever, it's flatter. So it means that you can actually retain a lot more highlight and shadow details for you to grade the footage a little bit better later. later. So it's actually good news. And to me in particular, uh, I have the M1X and in my Mark II. Uh, so I do shoot multi cams uh, sometimes. And if I shoot lock in the M1X and shoot normal flat profile or other color profiles on the M1 Mark II, it will make my life a little bit harder when it comes to post production because they all have slightly different kind of contrast and saturations and things like that. So having them all the same is actually a lot better and more consistent for my workflow. So it's good, definitely good for me. Benefit number three is the expanded low ISO range. Yes, you can now shoot at L64 and L100, which means that it's great news for those who are looking to minimize the impact on high shutter speed, uh, which is good if you use it. And uh, although nowadays, you know, you can actually shoot uh, with electronic shutter at much higher shutter speed now. So the low ISO range may not actually be as beneficial as one might think. And also I have to highlight that to you guys though, um, uh, people who may not understand that the native ISO uh, is still the 200 up to 6400. Anything below or beyond this is called extend or expanded range. Uh, it's actually a digital manipulations. Um, so it's not actually giving you better image quality as a result because a dynamic range wise in shooting at L64 and L100 does give you a slightly higher risk in clipping the highlights and uh, this is actually a fact just like any other companies out there so is when you expand it to the ultra high ISO you start having color cast and losing details and things like that it's the same thing so it's all about digital signal being manipulated so uh, yeah just be careful with that but it does allow you to have that option for a lot of photographers who want to do uh, motion uh, uh, pictures when I say motion pictures like blurring certain details things like that that is actually a great option and great built-in feature for you to, allow, uh, to do that sort of photography. And also, having said that, this expanded low ISO range doesn't work for video. So yeah, unfortunately, you're out of luck if you want to uh, go out and film something without using an ND filters or something like that to make sure that you have the right shutter speed. You're out of luck with that option. So you still have to use an ND filter in that sense. So there you go. But it's, I think it's a useful option for those who need it. Olympus, thank you for giving us this firmware update and I personally think this is the best firmware update ever in the Olympus history, I mean, since the digital era. Um, it's really good, you know, it's not an incremental update, it's actually a full feature firmware update that essentially giving you a new EM1 Mark II or 2.5 you could call it free even if you want because now it's up to date bang up to date in terms of performance and features almost as good as the m1x like i mentioned before apart from a few things first of all is the af right i mentioned about you know it has the uh, same autofocus algorithm so yeah it performs almost the same as the m1x if you have one you can compare them it's very equal but there are a couple of things they omitted first of all is the um uh the smart subject tracking the ai tracking thing so this one doesn't have the capability of recognizing subjects like train planes or cars or something like that so it doesn't have the capabilities so if you really like that feature or you really need that feature M1X is still that particular camera you need um, and also in video mode the continuous focusing is great on this camera now but there's one thing also different as well on the M1X is while recording you can change the focusing point just by toggling the uh, the four-way d-pad or the uh, the nipple thing that you can have uh, so that is still very very good there because uh, if you're relying on CAF a lot that gives you a whole load of flexibility while filming while well, the M1 Mark II cannot do that. You know, once you start recording, your focusing is fixed. When I say fixed, the position of the continued focus is fixed. So um, that may not be so good um, unless you are just central focus in the center port or a particular point. So that may not be bad. But if you want to change in midway, you can't do that. So these are the two things that kind of be different. But I guess, you know, Olympus has to do that to, uh, you know, make you feel a little bit better for those who already bought the M1X. So yeah, they, they, they don't feel gutted that they just pay half, like double the money 
for the M1 Mark II to get that camera uh, just because now you can essentially get the same thing but no no I'm just joking because the M1X is still really great uh, I used the M1X for my professional work because it's just a workhorse it's indestructible you know if you haven't seen our preview uh, this is linked up here there's a great great professional camera so the M1 Mark II I think is a very very capable thing now um, there's also a few things i haven't mentioned i know this firmware update has a great list of good features there like raw photos you can transfer raw photo from the camera to smart devices via the oi share app also it now allows you to connect to the olympus workspace software on desktop computers um, and also using utilizing the TruePic 8 uh, sen uh, processor not sensor uh, in the camera to help you process in raw photo to speed up all the workflow which is actually pretty amazing Thank you for watching this video and hope you enjoy this and don't forget to subscribe our channel if this is your first time here and don't forget to enable that notification by pressing that bell button there. So until next time, I shall see you soon. Ciao ciao, bye. Today we are very happy to review the latest OLEM, uh, OLEM, <laughs> OLEM D. <laughs> Welcome to Red35 and we are stuttering. So much rubbish here. I'm talking rubbish, just because I'm seeing rubbish. Last week Olympus gave us the one of the biggest firmware updates in... Fuck! <laughs> Has to do that. Who was that? What I'm talking about. Now brings it up to date. You know, uh, to all ah, uh, uh, <laughs> second is finally the log. Okay, not log. Okay, weird. Second is the log file. Yes, it's finally here for all the old one, old one, old one, old one, old one. Okay, so it's good news for people who are using it for making filming. Making filming, making filming. Oh. It's finally here for all the OM1 EM marked EM2. EM <laughs> Benny's in the. Look at the win. Look at the win. Ah. You like Olympus. You love Olympus. Buy Olympus. Olympus is the best. May the force be with you.